at Rackspace, we're always looking for some better way to work on our mobile phones. You know, I, we've had on our show Tempo, which does great uh, cal contextual calendar, or Mailbox, which uh, you know takes over your uh, Gmail uh, mailbox and makes it a lot more useful. But those pale in, in comparison to what, I, just, what I'm seeing this morning from Tipbit, which uh, takes your calendar, your contacts, your email, and other, other things, other pieces of your con contextual life and makes them a lot more useful and we're going to see it right now. Who are you? So my name is Ewan Meller, uh, Chief Architect and Founder at Titbit. Uh, I have worked in cloud telco uh, virtualization for many years now, uh, started in video on demand and then moved to uh, join ZenSource and it worked on Zen Server for a number of years. So uh, lots of technologies that kind of underpin the public clouds at AWS, at Rackspace. And so I moved from there and, and from that kind of telco distributed systems background into working on Titbit, uh, which is a new mail, contacts, and calendar app. Yeah, it's quite remarkable, and we might just see it real fast so people can uh, understand what we're talking about, because it, it really takes over your uh, calendar, your email, your contacts, and other things, and puts them together, and it makes it a lot more productive. Right? Yeah, absolutely. We, we certainly feel that they need to be together, that you can't handle one of those independently. That, what people need to do during their working day involves a cross-reference between all of those. And so it's really important to be able to do that on your phone. We, we want your phone not to be a, a device where you defer work until later. We want your phone to be a device where you can get work done. And in order to do that, you need to be able to bring the information down to the phone. That's what we're calling gravitational search, is the, the information isn't just you type in keywords and go and get things, but you have the system bring that information to you. Yeah. And, and that's really what we're looking to do, is to be able to take uh, information from your email, from your calendar, from your contacts, and bring them all together with, with what you get from LinkedIn, with what you get from Twitter, and those services, so that instead of you having to reach out and try and get everything, have an intelligent system that brings the information to you. Now, it, it, this is at the heart of my book, uh, Age of Context. You call it gravitational search, I call it contextual system, right? right? Um, let's see it. I, it it's, uh, your first product is uh, an iPhone app, right? That's right. Yeah. And, uh, so you're not on Android yet I, or Windows Phone. I have a new Windows Phone here. Yeah. <laughs> and so there's other players, but um, this is common. Sure. Um, I, of course, all the, all the smart technology is on the back end. I mean, yeah. That's where all of the work is being done, all of the hard work. But yes, the, the first UI that we put together is on iPhone. That's yeah. what we'll be launching with. And is, does it cost money or is it a free app? No, it's going to be free. Okay. Yeah. So let, let's see it just so we have something to talk about because so, it's quite remarkable. So we have here uh, email, calendar, people, um, your favorites. And if I go into my email here, uh, this is actually an email from your producer talking about the demo, uh, this one from Rocky. Um, but not only can I do the normal uh, phone, mail applications, those kind of things, um, you know, reply, delete, those kind of things. But that activity bar that I brought in that from the side has Titbit's additional uh, value add. And you can see that it's brought in uh, an indicator that there were two interesting people on this thread, but actually there were five interesting emails on the thread as well. And now, so now, let's say Rocky and I were talking about something with you, and then you were talking with your coworker about the same thing. It joins those together, right? It does. Let me, let me just uh, okay. select the mail there. So you can see there that it's actually not just selected uh, a conversation with you, but actually this is a conversation with me, my CEO, talking about the talking points for this interview. And so uh, the mail that he's got here saying, you and you should read the company backgrounder, uh, this was not a thread between, between you and, um, and your producer, but it was a thread between me and my CEO. But because of the, the recognition of the keywords that we're talking about the same thing, uh, we've actually brought those together into the search. Um, how, how accurate, and, and by the way, it's doing that with Twitter, with, with, other, with the social networks, with uh, other things, how accurate is that? Yeah, so, so I haven't had a couple of weeks to use it, so I, I, it looks awesome because this is really magical when it can join these kinds of dis discussions together and calendar items and social, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I mean, so if, if I drill into Brian, so that's what you were saying about it. It's pulled in, uh, it's pulled in the LinkedIn, it's pulled in the, the Twitter feed. So he was on the thread 
Uh, he works for, he's a marketing um, consultant that we're working with. And so it's been able to pull in his Twitter and, and his LinkedIn. And yeah, so how accurate is it? It's, uh, it's, a lot of it is driven from the behavior of the user. So what we can see over time is that your, uh, your results that, are, that you like, the ones that you don't like, we can see uh, the mails that you always respond to first, we can see what's important to you in your life. And that, that's really why it's important to have all of those things together in one app is because the results quality improves over time because we can see which things you respond to and which ones you don't. Now this is pretty pretty crazy. Um, I, and we're gonna cover how you're gonna monetize and other things. Um, keep going, because <laughs> I, I think this is a, a pretty significant app. I, it, and sure. I don't usually say that on, on the show, but so let me. You saw how popular Mailbox was. People are really struggling with with the tools in their lives on mobile phones, and they're looking for a better way than just the Gmail app or just the Apple app, um, because the the tools just don't um, bring things together, and it forces you to do a lot of searching and gr you know a lot of grinding just to find the answer to a question. You know, yeah. Brock, you asked me. What was that guy's name again? I have to go through and try to search for it. it Absolutely. It's not all Absolutely. there. And we, we obviously can't read your mind. We don't know what you're going to do next. But we know that keyword searching isn't always the way that people want to search. They yeah. always have a starting point. It's their email. It's their, the next meeting on their, on their calendar. Whatever it is, there's always a reason for you to be looking for something. And drill down on the phone should be a, a quick look through a short list, and it should be a tap. You know, It should be yeah. very quickly oh, I know this guy from, from so-and-so place and be able to go and get that information. Or it's about this meeting, so I go and get that information. I shouldn't have to type in all of the contextual keywords. I mean, you were talking about it as contextual search. That becomes the first kind of point of entry into a search is the thing you're trying to do. Yeah. And so having an app where we can see what you're trying to do is, is very helpful. So can, can if, I go to the, oh, go ahead. if I go to the Amazon Web Services mail here, it's just a marketing mail that I got from Amazon. Um, you can see that we've pulled in, um, this will be the, the Amazon address book entry, that kind of thing. But if I hit the Google button, I can actually use the keywords from the mail as a Google search. So maybe we got it, um, we haven't got the information that you want locally, but maybe you want to go out on the web and get it. And we've actually identified the Amazon web services there as a keyword. You can see that we've inserted it into Google as a, as a part of the search. And that's that, cool. That really does let you. Although it's, a, it's the wrong web hosting company, but <laughs> <laughs> but it's still pretty cool, right? Yeah, well, I would read those articles and I would say, this is nowhere near as good as Rackspace. I mean, that's obviously what I would do. Yeah. Um, but the opportunity to there for me to jump out of my email and go and um, go another step further is really what we're looking to do. So we can drive people to Twitter, we can drive people to LinkedIn and, and allow you to, to reach out into those other services. One thing I just tried to do, because we're running a little late and, and that's gonna affect, affect the rest of my day, is I went to my calendar and tried to warn people uh, on the next appointments that were running late, and I couldn't find the email for the calendar item. Um, take me into the calendar and, and does it hook those emails in? Sure, we'd be able to. And does it do that those. automatically? Because a lot of us are really lazy when we put something on our calendar. You know, I just put, you know, meeting with uh, Joe Smith, you know, <laughs> and, and who the hell is Joe Smith and is it the right one? This sure. is where I'm going to wonder if it, if it works accurately to find the right Joe Smith because there's so many Joe Smiths in the world. Right. Yeah, I mean, sure, there's the, uh, there's the daily stand-up that we have in the engineering team. And you can see that it's pulled together all of the people on that. Uh, and those are hooks into my address book. So they're right there. And so, yeah, I mean, getting the right Joe Smith is a very difficult problem. Um, yeah. I mean, it's an impossible problem. So we have a button in the UI where we can say, no, that's not the right one. Go, go get me the right one. Um, when we're talking about something like Twitter, something like LinkedIn, and uh, you, can, you can say to the system, no, that's the wrong guy. Um, but obviously, because we've got email and we've got calendar, it's the email address that's going to be the first key. And those are useful and unique. So, so we'd be tying that off your address book um, as having the email in there and using that as the person's name. Yeah. Uh, so you set this up, you just download the app and it, uh, it goes into your Apple email, your Apple calendar, and does it need to access to other things to get it set up properly? So you initially set it up with uh, your email account just set up on your phone like normal, uh, your calendar set up on your phone like normal, and then you can add Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, you don't need those. 
but obviously every single service that you add is adds more richness and you can add Dropbox and so we can get documents from, from your Dropbox and index those as well. Uh, so we have the ability to say uh, here's the PDF that's interesting with respect to this mail and yeah. start to index those things as well. Does, so it, does it do notifications as well for all this stuff and what kinds of notifications does it do because this isn't just your email client anymore, it's a really a life client. Um, so tell me about your, e your notification strategy. Yeah, so we're sending push notifications for new email at the moment, like any mail client would do. And yes, we can certainly extend those into uh, meeting coming up alerts, those kind of things. So yeah, you, you'd certainly want to jump from a meeting into here's the guy that you're meeting. I mean, that's one of the scenarios that I use all the time is who am I meeting, show me his face. I just, yeah. I just need that so I can shake hands with the guy and know which, which person I'm speaking to. And, and being able to pop those things up to the top of your stack, as it were, uh, is, that's the kind of scenarios that we're really chasing. You're really much more advanced on understanding context, and I bet you have a long roadmap of things you'd like to do. Right? I, I can think of just the notification, hey, I'm running late, Mm -hmm. The phone knows where I am, yeah. so it knows I'm late <laughs> for the next meeting and knows what's on my calendar and it could warn both of us that, right. that I'm running late. Are you, you know, where do you think this is going? I, I think this is, this is going to um, you know, a place where you move beyond the phone's restrictions in terms of CPU and you put much more intelligence on the back end and then you can do everything. Uh, you know, when, when you're hosting this intelligence in a data center and it can see the data, then it has the opportunity to uh, make all kinds of predictions in terms of um, time, in terms of your behavior, uh, that we can push forward yeah, exactly those kind of things. And you see that from, um, from people like Google Now who are trying to do some of that early predictive stuff. Uh, we, we're really uh, looking to do that, but across the full ecosystem, across Active Sync and Exchange, you know, being able to do that with the enterprise mail that people are used to, uh, not just being across Gmail, and, and really pushing that into the into the other services. So, yeah, I mean, the, the the intelligence is going to be the most exciting part of this. Is that when we get the opportunity to uh, help in your life with exactly running late, maps, uh, show times for cinema. I mean, you can th you can think of all sorts of things that would be really interesting yeah. to be able to to just one click tap. You know, I have a meeting, it says a location, please get me a restaurant nearby. You know, those kind of things where you, if you were to do that on a phone today, is a copy, a paste, a keyword search, a drill down into the Yelp app, a drill down into the Maps app. I mean, it would take you, you know, 10 minutes to find a restaurant on your phone. Um, but the opportunity for us to predict those things in advance and go get you things, very, very powerful. Well, why is it that a startup like you can do this and Google, Google is clearly aiming in the right direction with Google Now and with Gmail and, and other contextual systems it's building for Glass, um, but they're not there yet. Why, why are you able to do that when a big multinational company can't get there? I think a lot of Google's focus is on or Apple advertising revenue um, yeah. and we're certainly not in interested in uh, driving ads to people's eyeballs, that's not our focus. Uh, so I think our different focus, you know, our focus on being an app that people will want to use and to help you is going to be the thing that, that really kicks us forward, is that we, we want to design something that we want to use every day. Uh, th yeah. This isn't going to be about what's a subtle way to get a new advert in front of you. Um, yeah. What, what is your business model? How are you guys going to make money with a free app? <laughs> so <laughs> And no ads. <laughs> th this will obviously be useful for a lot of people. And once you reach that point, then uh, companies are going to want to pay for security, for audit, the ability to produ provision users, that kind of thing. So we see corporations who are able to pay paying for value add features. That's going to be the business plan. Do you, do you see being uh, becoming your own social network as like a Yammer kind of thing off of this? Or it, you know, do you, do you th think that there's a business model that might spring out of this that, that you, I, I can't I, even foresee? I, I think that the, the most valuable thing about email is that everybody has it. And I, I don't think that there's value for us particularly in being able to uh, try and step you away from another system. I mean, you, you see with Google Wave that it collapsed because nobody wanted to yet another inbox. Right? And the opportunity that we've seen is to keep you in the systems that you want to use, but make it possible for you to do so on a phone. And so I don't see us 
building the next Facebook, that's not really interesting, but pulling together the current Facebook um, with your existing mail and your calendar, that is interesting. And so for us, it's really about reaching out to other people who are really good at that, you know, reaching out to LinkedIn and Facebook and those kind of people yeah. and pulling that in. And I can certainly see us uh, doing Salesforce integration where, we, um, where a salesman has all the information that he needs, but we're not going to replace Salesforce and we're not going to replace your mail. We're going to help those come together. Yeah. Tell me a little bit briefly about your company. What, what kind of company are you building? How was it funded? And um, what, where do you think that's going? So we're a very new startup, um, just a few employees at the moment. Uh, we're based in Seattle and here in San Francisco. Uh, the plan is to grow engineering on both sites and, and develop a you know, world-class engineering center, small um, but, um, but well-formed. You know, find, find the best people and, and hire the best and only the best. And that's, that's really the culture that we want to build here in San Francisco. I'm sure everybody would say that. Yeah. Uh, but that's, that's really what I want to build is to have the kind of the kind of organization where people you know want to come in and work every day and work hard and, and stay late and, and enjoy changing the world changing the way that people um, work every day I mean it really is the, the opportunity here is is go big or go home like if we yeah. if we get this right hundreds of millions of people billions of people will be using our app and that's really what we want to do very cool how are you funded again oh we're seed funded at the moment okay. and so we're um, obviously pushing forward into a new round of funding through through this year and next year. Very cool. Good luck to you. I think you're in a hot space and it's really, really interesting. Are you going to uh, turn this into an API that other people can build things on top of? Like Evernote sort of has become a platform for a whole bunch of things to build on top of? Yeah, and it, that's a really interesting uh, space for us. The, we already have an API on, on the back end that we're using, uh, so it's, it's kind of been architected to be plugged in. And, uh, but on the phones, I mean, today the phones are very closed, certainly iOS is very closed. And yeah, the, the opportunity there to open that up for people to, to plug in their value add, I think is very important in the long term, yeah. Very cool. Uh, where do we get it, and where do we learn more about you guys? Uh, so go to tipbit.com, and we will be launching a beta very soon. And so you, you can sign up then today for a notification and you'll be able to sign up for, uh, in fact, by the time this video is done, you'll be able to sign up for the real beta and, and we'll be launched on the App Store. Very cool. Thank you so much for showing it Thank to you. me. It's really, uh, it's one of those products that you see and it's say, boom, it's, uh, it's going to be something everybody wants. Great. So. Thank, Thank you, you so much.